Well, they're coming down. My name is Curtis Russell. I'm a PhD fellow in theater performance, theater performance here at the Graduate Center. Thank you so much to everyone for being here, for sharing your after Saturday afternoon with us today. And thank you too to these wonderful artists for sharing, for giving so generously of your time and talent. Now, uh, this is a Q&A, I ask that you please focus on Q's and not make them C's, no comments, please. Uh, if you have comments, I'm sure the artists would love to have discussions with you afterwards, but we'll keep our questions sort of brief and to the point. Um, to start off, if we could, I'd love to hear a little bit from each of you, just about sort of the genesis of the idea for this, and more specifically, like at what point you each knew, like, okay, this is a story worth telling. Um, anyway. Tanya. Oh, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I, I got a, um, I had a conversation with uh, Stephanie Ibarra, uh, who runs the mobile unit, who's now the New York Times Director of Baltimore Center Stage. Okay. Um, uh, but we did a production of Twelfth Night for the mobile unit, and um, I got the, the opportunity to play Festing in that show. And with the mobile unit, if you're not familiar with it, you get to perform for a very uh, beautiful, unique audience as you go to uh, the prison system at all levels of security, you go to community centers, you go to women's shelters. And um, there's some of the, the best audiences that I've ever performed for, so bright. And, um, and just, they're at a, a point in their lives where they want a spot of joy, and so you come in and you perform, and it's this really beautiful, pure thing. You're not trying to change the world as a performer or anything, you're just trying to like, give a good, a good moment and a, a, a highlight to their day, and they, and they, they uh, respond very well to it. But what I really connected to was uh, how uh, integrated I could be into the audience. It's the reason why I came down here as opposed to up on stage, as opposed to I could get to. Um, and I, I wanted to tell a story where uh, both the audience and I could participate simultaneously. And um, I thought about what builds a town, what builds a community, um, what are the things that pull at the community, what are the things that pull at the identity of the town, and um, how we are responsible for each other and that decision making. So I wanted to kind of take that, um, the, the, the devil, uh, deal with the devil uh, story and make it a sort of a collective thing to see how, how we all have a collective responsibility in it. Um, so, uh, yeah. and as, as the process went on, it seemed like it started to solidify more and more of this, uh, obviously, it like a moment well, where to go, but I wanted to just kind of see what it felt like to be part of the thing as the thing was happening. Thank you. Uh, Trisha, what you do now? Very different answer. <laughs> um, I think that um, I was watching The Breakfast Club, and uh, like nine minutes in is the scene where they go to take their jackets off at the same time. And the whole piece kind of launched from there. Um, I just couldn't stop watching that and because I thought it was such a universal moment of um, two people kind of going up against each other in this like iconic movie and it was just an embodied power struggle that I kind of wanted to dig into. Uh, and so I started I started thinking it was a very small piece about these two actors, and then it ended up just kind of like really fitting in a time of my life where I was thinking about fan fiction a lot and what that means, and, and what what is fan fiction and how that's defined, and also like what isn't everything fan fiction in a way, kind of, and, and wanting to then completely double down on that idea and go into the minutia of it and kind of build an alternate reality and then look at the relationship between two people over time. And what we showed tonight was a really small section of what is kind of this epic story about, you know, two actors, and very specifically in the script, I think two women could play this role. I don't think it needs to be two men. I think it's just two actors um, that have a shared experience and then go on to kind of like, live their lives together and have a pretty normal existence. And, it, and the play in its whole form becomes a lot about failure and recovery, I think. Um, and, and so that's kind of the genesis of it, I would say. James and Drew? Um, as James talks about in his um, 
in the opening. I think um, it was born mainly out of just the cumulative number of hours that we've spent at the Met and at various art museums, but especially the Met, just talking and laughing and um, uh, the way our friendship intertwines with visual art. Um, and Annie Tipier directed the piece. Um, along with Rachel Chafkin, and it was Rachel's, it was Rachel's idea to, to make a piece. Because she, we, we, we went to the art, we went to a museum with her, and just the three of us, we were just walking around, and, and Rachel, seeing our relationship mapped onto the museum, she said that it was a story worth telling. And, and if I may add, yeah. I mean, I think Jerome answers it on stage. Like Jerome was in Salvador, in Brazil, and he literally made these very complex, um, I guess that was after that. After Rachel said to make a piece, then it sort of like sat on the back burner, we're like, one day we'll do this. And Jerome and Salvador started, e we emailed each other these like museum-based things, but it really took off when Jerome emailed me this one that you saw the first like five minutes of, which is this like 20 minute intense slideshow he sent me with this very elaborate electronic music score and recording of him narrating. And it becomes about the making of ink and the history of the making of ink with the whole piece of becomes about. And also it's like a very personal essay from Jerome. And I was like stunned by it. Um, and I think for me, that was the moment that I was like, this is the like digging in point. Um, the rest is very good, I, rec I recommend. Yeah. <laughs> and Jerome made it so I can do that. Fabulous, thank you. Now, how is everyone in the audience that has a question for anyone up here? Yeah. Um, how, how is the, uh, the act of uh, reinterpreting or reimagining something like motivate your work? It felt like a lot of, this is not all of you, it felt like each of, each of the artists or, or was kind of. Uh, interested in reinvestigating an idea that already kind of exists in one way. But then what is this reinterpreting and this sort of um, you know, what is that what does that mean to you? What does that come from? So for those of you in the back is asking how uh, the act of reinterpretation or reimagining um, affects these um, the work in general or these projects in specific? Yeah how the, the I could jump in I uh, just know it um, have you built like the 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 like constraint of knowing that this was going to be about Bender and Brian now to tell all these stories within these interactions between two people, it was very freeing for me to then dive into anything I wanted to do. Um, and, and have them become whoever I wanted them to become, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I would just add that for us, uh, Trisha and I worked on a production this year called Teen Tech Shoes, which did not happen to be in, it's all in fam. But we, we discovered through that process sort of mutual love for bits, you know, sort of Lotsi, and uh, I think theater is uh, by its very nature sort of a prestige art form, and it's very additive. Um, so to go from Teen Tech Shoes, in which we just sort of kept layering and layering and layering sort of jokes and, and physical comedy and, and you know, bits and bits and bits, bits on bits. I think this is sort of the reverse of that, where we, uh, Trish became obsessed by a, a bit she, she found, you know, a bit of scolian in, in this film, and exploded that into a whole original imagined universe. So it's it's sort of like the, um, you know, sort of cracking open an atom and discovering an infinity inside of it, I would say. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I would say for me, I had like the, the, the bit of a seed of the idea, but then the language sort of um, forced my hand in a way. Like I, had, I saw people in my community, so I wanted to give them language and voice and sort of in a, in a certain rhythm and poetry, so that sort of just allowed for the, the piece to expand in a way. So I just started with, with those two things, the seed of an idea and the language, like how how does this sound, how does this sound musically, what, a, what kind of a town am I in? So it, it, it expanded from there. And then what are the uh, costs? I have a fabulous director, Tamara Woodard, um, who would always, because I'm 
really into metaphors. I'm from the South, we speak in metaphors all the time. Metaphors and symbols, that's all I know. Um, so she's, just, she's always kind of directing the action of like, what does it cost in this moment? What does it cost in this moment? What are the risks? And that can be answered any number of ways, but if I'm being specific to a community, then it has to turn in a, in a certain way. Um, so I was kind of, uh, you know, uh, being led by language. Um, I would say one thing for me is um, there's this quote um, by this, this this writer who James and I both love, but it's just a phrase that just says um, an alphabet of things, not word, or not letters. Um, and to me, what that means is that, like in the in the piece, um, because it's an art lecture. I think James and I are both, both enchanted by um, guided tours at art museums and how different tour guides can use the same piece of art, the statue, to talk about anything. Like they can talk about their own lives, they can talk about the history of the statue, they can talk about the life of the artist. But to me, in making the piece, there was a process of like thinking with objects and thinking with arts, objects that then exist around the world, and, and so like moving from thoughts to thoughts, um, uh, using objects uh, to help me. Um, for example, there's a part where, like, where we ended on the bar cloth, um, what comes next is I talk about how in Polynesia um, they make black pigment using um, using charcoal and they burn they burn burn coconuts in order to, in order to make their charcoal. So then and then I start to meditate on the ways that different cultures use the parts of the earth where they live in order to make their color, in order to um, both um, adorn their garments, but also to write. Um, but at, at different points in the lecture, um, a work of art or an object will serve as, as a, um, a site of thinking. Um, and yeah, and, and, but, but really I've been quite inspired by, by art museum tours and like the, the, the the use of a work of art simply as a context, or not simply, but as a context to talk about anything, politics, history, yourself. Um, and friendship, again, like, like James uses the statue in part to talk about that, our friendship, but he also talks about the statue itself. I hope we're just about out of time. We haven't had a chance to hear from Annie yet. I wonder if you might speak just, just briefly about Oh, what you felt your, your sort of intervention in this project, it was such a clearly personal project, you know, how, how, you, how you felt your place in, you know, in the project. Yeah, I've known James and Drew a very long time, and we have done many shows together now, and I think um, all of these shows have had a, either a lecture or a storytelling component, and I think the majestic thing about what they do and what I'm so drawn to is that there is there's an unbelievably surprising amount to be said about the art that they're inspired by, the writers that they're inspired by, and there's so much that they don't know how to say, and that gets encapsulated, I think, in the music and the how they collaborate on music together, and that becomes a predominant language in their work and one which I identify with and sometimes lock into. Um, in an even more emotional way than um, just the language on its own. Um, and I like the, I just like finding, I, they have a funny, weird sense of humor about art, and it makes me laugh. Um, and it makes me look at art differently now. Um, yeah. Fabulous. Well, thank you once again to you all for coming up. Another robust hand for our.